and uh, he has conducted many uh, workshops and training modules, uh, especially asthma training module. He is in a national executive uh, board of IP and IKPP, and he has won so many awards. Uh, so, um, let me introduce the speaker also because Subramanian sir has said. Uh, you introduce the speaker first and then I will introduce in my own style another one of four words. So that job is also with me. I am introducing the speaker also for today. Uh, Dr. Sushil Kabra sir is a professor of pediatrics, AIMS, New Delhi. His uh, interest is everything burst in uh, based on lungs, ARA, asthma, tuberculosis and now COVID. Uh, proud to say, very important thing, today's speaker has written around 170 chapters, that is 100 plus 70 chapters in various textbooks. A great achievement in me and he has around 620 publications and he has many awards won. Uh, sir uh, Subramanya sir and uh, Kabra sir, please carry on with the session sir. Res uh, respected the Dr. Rudmini uh, and all my dear friends from Kerala and, uh, and the viewers who have joined on the platform. So let me make it short. So uh, my apologies for not taking the names of everybody on the platform. So kindly uh, excuse me on this ground to save some time and to listen to Professor Emeritus, uh, our dear Cabra sir. So uh, my introduction is that because of him, we are there in the respiratory chapter. He is the pillar and uh, he has built really all of us in the chapter for uh, taking the pulmonology forward. We affectionately often uh, call him father of pulmonology for taking this field in India forward for decades, not for one or two days. He's very humble and you can see that he started sharing the screen. And let me tell you one line, post COVID, what is the scenario? Uh, he is going to speak and I'm inviting him uh, to speak over the issue. And I'll, I'll reserve my comments at the end of the session. Sir, we are all eager to listen to you. Uh, over to you, Kabra, sir. Thank you, Dr. Subramanya, uh, chairpersons and uh, office bearers of uh, Trivandrum and Kerala IAP. I am very happy to uh, uh, interact with you people. And in the next 18 to 20 minutes, I'll talk about post-COVID-19 infection, infection lung diseases in children. Okay, and this is based on the standard treatment guideline, our president's action program. And uh, it is prepared by our uh, colleagues, Dr. Kanaram Jhat and Praveen Kumar. And uh, I just did the editing of uh, this uh, STG. So overview will be this, that uh, what is the definition when I can say that it is a post-COVID lung disease, how common it is, what is the pathophysiology, what is the risk factor, what is different types and severity, how to manage and so on. Okay, so the first and foremost is <clears throat> that uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection in children, all of us are aware, is primarily a mild uh, uh, illness and majority will recover in uh, four weeks time. And as compared to adults, it is most of the time in children, it is either asymptomatic or very mild disease. Small proportion may experience a persistent symptoms attributed to COVID infection beyond 12 weeks that cannot be explained by alternative diagnosis. And then we consider that possibly it is a sequelae of COVID infection. So to say that what is the post-COVID lung, uh, lung disease in children, it is a persistent symptoms beyond 12 weeks that cannot be explained by alternative diagnosis. So it is a diagnosis by ex of exclusion. So you have to see if a child has suffered from a mild, moderate or severe COVID and having some symptoms 
that we'll see what are those symptoms then we may consider that it may be a post covid lung disease and what are various names as we are learning more and more about the covid so various names has been given to conditions which are going on and on and on even after recovery from the acute illness of a covid infection so one commonest is post covid 19 syndrome long covid long haul covid 19 chronic covid 19 and post acute sequelae of sars cov 2 that is a psc so depending on who is taking care and uh, accordingly they have given the names but there is nothing in the name we should be aware that after a acute covid infection irrespective of the severity it may cause some mild to moderate grade symptoms even in children so what is the magnitude of problem so this condition is well described in adult with the prevalence varying from 5 to 80% depending on what definition they have used and what type of patients they have seen whether these were only mild moderate or only admitted patients that's why there is so much of a variation limited data for children based on a meta analysis which was recently published in journal of infection Uh, over 17 studies children and young people with covid reported persistent cough in 17% and dyspnea breathlessness on exertion in 43% and uh, another review of 14 studies of long covid in children and adolescents reported persistent symptoms of runny nose congested nose in 1 to 12% chest uh, pain tightness in 1 to 31% and sleep disturbances in 2 to 63% and as i said because we are learning more and more about it some of these are based on the hospital some of these studies have included only those who had a severe disease those who got hospitalized that's why there is so much of a variation but it's clear that persistence of cough persistence of cold chest pain and tightness these are the uh, uh, problems which may happen in a small proportion thank you thank you However, we should be aware that it is not only lungs; it is affecting whole of the body. So there may be some low-grade fever, which is very common. That uh, the parents may say that the child had fever for one or two days, which was hundred, two hundred, three degree temperature, but subsequently he continues to have a fever around ninety-nine, ninety-nine point five in the evening and in night. otherwise child is doing well most of the time child may be asymptomatic but because parents are recording it that's why there is a fever there may be fatigue easy fatigability headache cognitive dysfunction myalgia pain abdomen diarrhea loss of smell but as we are getting these uh, 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 statistics there was five there were five case control studies in which comparison of prevalence of symptoms of covid and without covid there were no significant difference suggesting that possibly these symptoms may be related to other things children are affected either directly by the covid infection or indirectly by school closure lockdown etc there is a, some problem of uh, financial uh, burden at home so all these are affecting uh, the, uh, the children so apart from respiratory symptoms there may be some cognitive function and other problems so that we should be aware as a pediatrician who are advocate of child health the pathophysiology of uh, uh, post covid lung disease is not very precisely known suggested mechanism is that direct damage to the respiratory system or other system involvement including cardiac and rheumatological and nutritional the postulated mechanisms are initial infection ongoing virus host and uh, uh, virus and host interaction persistent hyper inflammation that one of the uh, uh, manifestation is uh, misc and poor antibody response and in some there may be a exaggerated immune response leading to autoimmunity so it is one is agent is creating some trouble but more of a how a individual is reacting to this infection that is causing more symptoms what are the risk factor can i identify an individual that yes this is likely to get a post covid uh, lung disease no we do not have much idea about it but there are certain uh, uh, these reported 
risk factor are the older children, older age group of the children. Six to eighteen. It may be. It may be because they are able to tell us that yes, child, is, they are having a respiratory difficulty. More commonly found in females, girls, worse pre-infection health. That is underlying disease is not well controlled. Presence of allergic diseases like asthma, allergy, rhinitis. They may continue to have or may get a exacerbation of asthma and allergic diathesis. Severe infection. And even longer duration of fever. If someone got a fever for a day and the other one got a fever for five days, then the chances of long COVID lung disease are more and systemic symptoms. And prolonged hospitalization, of course, that is related to the direct damage to the respiratory uh, in, uh, system. What is the types and severity? The exact, uh, this thing is not known, but as far as respiratory symptoms are concerned, there may be reactive reactive airway disease and which is, which is, I request all the other people to mute your mic please. So, reactive airway disease has been documented even by our cohort study of a known COVID uh, infection uh, say in 2014 that these children are more prone for development of a reactive airway disease uh, uh, after three or four years of age. Some children, as like any other viral infection, may develop okay. interstitial lung disease. Some children may yeah. develop a severe problem in form of a post-infectious bronchiolitis obliterans, diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, and sometimes exercise intolerance. And how I can differentiate that whether it is because of uh, COVID and its sequelae or it is because of unrelated viral infection, it is difficult and you cannot differentiate by any laboratory test. So, excessive investigation may be uninformative, costly, and may cause harm to the child. Therefore, one should adopt a conservative approach with the minimum investigation, which we will be discussing. So, what all uh, uh, assessment we can do? First and foremost is good clinical history and examination. Look for dyspnea, cough, chest pain, exercise intolerance, fatigue, sore throat, nasal congestion, voice changes. All these are non-specific, but they may be following a COVID also. So chest imaging, it is warranted if the symptoms are persisting without clinical improvement with the development of a new symptom. So first and foremost is you can do an X-ray film of the chest. If symptoms are not very severe, just restrict to X-ray film of the chest rather than going for a CT scan because that may cause more anxiety Unless there are some clinical symptoms, you are not going to do anything. And even if you do a CT scan in a mildly uh, symptomatic child, there may be few uh, uh, GGO's uh, ground glass appearance in the CT scan. So that's why it should be avoided as far as possible. Pulmonary function test and bronchodilator uh, reversibility, it may consider in children above five years of age. It will help in knowing the pattern of lung involvement, whether it is obstructive or restrictive. Positive bronchodilator test will indicate reactive airway disease. And since it is a less invasive, if child is symptomatic, you can do it and then treatment, appropriate treatment can be prescribed. <clears throat> the other tests which are uh, uh, suggested is six minute walk test and cardiopulmonary exercise testing. In a study, impaired six minute walk test was preserved in 66% of the children and other conditions like heart disease and thromboembolic disease should be ruled out before you do a exercise testing. So these doesn't have much role as far as our pediatric patients are concerned. Plexismography and diffusion studies are restricted only for those who are having a severe disease, having an interstitial lung disease, Clinical features are, cannot be explained by other diseases, then only you will go for it. So first and foremost is if clinical symptoms are there, may go for an X-ray film of the chest. Only in a severe sequelae, you may go for a CT scan and pulmonary function test. <clears throat> there are no studies for uh, which prove that this is effective treatment for post-COVID lung disease in children or even in adults that for that matter. And treatment is symptomatic. 
we will decide the treatment depending on the pattern of disease as we have seen that there may be a asthma kind like picture there may be a interstitial lung disease so if it is a asthma like picture which is going beyond 3 months we are justified in starting the treatment similar to that of a asthma assess the severity start on inhaled corticosteroids and salbutamol sos if there is a documented interstitial lung disease by the uh, imaging and uh, uh, if a child is having a compatible clinical symptoms may treat it like any other non covid interstitial lung disease including a short course or a tapering doses of steroids to keep the child symptom free and if required other immunosuppressants which are called steroid sparing agents and sometimes immunomodulated drugs with monitoring but these are very small proportion of patients if you find these patients then only go for these uh, treatment so question comes what is the responsibility of a practicing pediatrician working in a public or private as the illness is not well defined there were long term problems may happen even in the mild disease so it is our responsibility that all children with varying severity of documented covid should be assessed by pediatrician at least once around 4 to 6 weeks and uh, if child is asymptomatic then we just tell parents that they observe for recurrent cough breathlessness and other problem including some non respiratory problem so we will check for the clinical details if indicated then only imaging and pst discuss with patient, uh, parents explain when to come back so all children who have whether it was a symptomatic asymptomatic severe symptoms admitted not admitted ambulatory treatment they should at least be seen at least once around 4 to 6 weeks to see whether there are some persistent symptoms if child has clinical symptoms related to covid follow the child every 3 month for next one or two years for symptom symptomatic child give appropriate treatment as we had discussed so this is a proposed flow diagram that a child with suspected post covid lung disease as we have discussed detail clinical history examination look for pre existing disease as we have seen that pre pre infection uh, uh, health uh, issue may modify the post covid sequelae current signs and symptoms with duration treatment history hospitalization respiratory support medication etc and review of a previous investigations including imaging if duration is between 4 to 12 weeks mild to moderate severity continue support with therapy and rehabilitation so this is as i said if you have seen a child and child is mild to moderate just give a symptomatic treatment but if the duration is more than 12 weeks recognize the clinical pattern whether it is a obstructive airway disease something similar to that of a asthma or it is a restrictive disease something similar to that of a interstitial lung disease including post infectious bronchiolitis obliterans check for other system involved and a may do perform a pulmonary function test if it is more than 12 weeks and or severe disease or 6 minutes walk test and if symptoms here in this group that we you have examined the child at 4 to 6 weeks and if the symptoms are persisting or are severe we go for the same and if there is a obstructive pattern say if a child is having cough which is exertional more in night and it gets uh, reversibility uh, it responds to salbutamol inhalation then it is a obstructive pattern if it is a restrictive disease in that case we may have to do a chest ct in a severe disease not in all and if the other tests are available that can be done impaired 6 minute walk test then you can go for a echocardiography and cardiopulmonary exercise testing so these are just a screening test and the treatment is for underlying pattern majority of the patient will have a obstructive airway disease so manage it with the inhaled corticosteroids if required a short course of oral prednisolone and if required then only very small proportion may require slightly longer prednisolone optimization of the symptoms continue support to treatment and rehabilitation optimal treatment of underlying disease that is very important that covid was just incidental as far as the third wave is concerned the problem may be because of the underlying comorbidity 
So if it is a nephrotic syndrome, cystic fibrosis, asthma, or some other uh, immunosuppression, treat that effectively and follow national guideline for vaccination in children. So prevention, can, we, can uh, some preventive measures be taken that may prevent the post-COVID sequelae? So as of now, we do not have much information. Most of the risk factor for the long COVID in children are non-modifiable except pre-infection health. So that is again coming as a pre-infection health. So chronic diseases should be managed properly. Therefore, children with any existing disease should be managed appropriately. What is the prognosis? There is a lack of studies on long-term follow-up of children with COVID and little known about the long-term effect. A registry-based study from Norway reported an increase in the healthcare use up to six months in one to five years of age. So it suggests obviously that those who had a even mild moderate infection, they may continue to get a recurrent cough, cold, coryza, and most of the time it would be obstructive airway disease. So can vaccination prevent a long uh, COVID? So again, the inf in, uh, information of impact of vaccination post-COVID sequelae is not very well uh, studied. A preprint study, study appeared in the preprint in adults, not a pediatric patients, that uh, reported that the vaccination was associated with decreased acute COVID complication, as we have seen that the third COVID wave was very less severe or asymptomatic in those who, were, who had received the vaccination. And it may reduce the post-COVID sequelae to some extent, but it is predominantly more evident in adults less than 60 years of age rather than more than 60 years of age, though it is not applicable to us. But it may suggest that possibly vaccination may reduce the severity and indirectly may reduce the post-COVID sequelae. So what should be our future aim? Uh, including uh, uh, as suggested by the Indian Academy of Pediatrics. As COVID-19 is a newly emerging illness, its long-term sequelae needs evaluation. And all of us are responsible for creating or generating data on what is the pathophysiology of uh, COVID and long COVID effect on overall health, not only respiratory, but other systems are also affected, specifically psychological issues, and specifically effect on the lung health, whether it affects the growth of the lung, whether it produces long-term sequelae in form of development of asthma and impact of vaccination on long-term sequelae. So how we can achieve it? It is responsibility of uh, all the pediatricians that uh, most of the big centers should develop a cohort of children with COVID-19 infection who had a documented COVID-19 infection in different severity and prepare a uniform meticulous follow-up plans so that data can be compiled later on to obtain a meaningful result, which will give us a better understanding. So a little bit about lung involvement in the uh, uh, multi-system inflammatory uh, syndrome of child. So this is a unique disease developing in two to four weeks after uh, COVID-19. So that's why it is not the long COVID effect. It is part of the ongoing infection. And initial impression suggests that uh, though there are not much data, but it suggests that there were, if the lung ultrasound is done, there are multiple B lines, children in plural refusion in nine of, out of 10 children in ultrasound, suggesting that MISC may produce, say, child has recovered from COVID, acute COVID, but has developed fever. And if you find there is a plural effusion consolidation, then it may be because of uh, uh, long term COVID. And even there may be some uh, case reports of cavitatory lesion in the newborn. And if you see the comparison, as I said, uh, MISC had a plural, more plural effusion, pulmonary consolidation, and ground glass haziness along with, uh, uh, as compared to the acute pulmonary uh, acute uh, COVID pneumonia. So this is about the uh, uh, clinical manifestations of MISC in the lungs. So to conclude. COVID-19 may cause the post-COVID-19 syndrome, including post-COVID lung disease. And it is not only restricted to the lungs, but it is affecting other parts of the body, other health, mental health specifically, not by direct infection, but indirect effect on children. It is well-defined in adult, but adults, but there are limited studies in children with variable definition. 
inclusion criteria in follow up periods that's why there is so much of a variation there is no information on treatment and preventive measures till more studies become available optimal treatment of underlying respiratory diseases supportive symptomatic treatment for long covid and follow up national guideline for vaccination based on the current level of evidence and algorithmic approach for children i have discussed and it is impact, expected that with new information will be better will understand better uh, pathophysiology clinical manifestations treatment and preventive aspect of long covid in children in future and as i again say that this is a responsibility of all of us who are dealing with children we should generate data not to notify and publish it so that it helps us in better understanding of this disease thank you very much if there are any other questions i'll be more than happy to uh, uh, sir, answer can, sir can you please stop sharing the screen i'll ask yes yes yes, yes definitely hmm. sir uh, the first question is from dr shija who says what type of lung pathophysiology is post covid lung is it obstructive ventilatory diffusion defect or is it immune mediated i mean what sort of um, i mean as i have already discussed it is it has a different patterns it's not only a single type of disease it may be obstructive in some specifically if there is a history of asthma in past it may be restrictive in some which may be because of some chronic inflammatory process which is ongoing in form of a post infectious bronchiolitis obliterans or interstitial lung disease sir i, I think i will i will further qualify her question where is the damage is it in the airways is it uh, in the walls is it i mean is it in the immunological uh, system of the lung or is it in the interstitium where is the damage happening all three including direct uh -huh. as i have discussed pathophysiology one is direct infection and damage second thing is how we are reacting to the infection how our children are reacting to the infection that becomes a immune so if i am reacting it may be a immune phenomena direct infection that may cause a damage to the and then uh, it it may cause more of a cough cold and obstructive airway disease okay sir i think uh, just for the benefit of shija what sir is telling is there could be primary damage there could be secondary damages related to the inflammation immune immune mediated processes etc based on the severity and uh, there could be damages also related to treatment we have not yet mentioned post covid you know prolonged intubation prolonged ventilation and associated damages so it could be very difficult to separate it from the primary uh, pathology and therefore it may it may require some more data as dr kabra sir has already told sir second question please let us know about classical chest x ray findings in post covid i mean if at all we get something with that can be attributable to post covid as uh, i had shown in this slide that uh, if a, it is a mild uh, a cough cold or coryza or some mild obstructive disease x ray may be absolutely normal in majority in a small proportion you may get something like a consolidation ground glass haziness and in a small proportion with a severe uh, problem there may be a pleural effusion so there is not a single uh, pulmonary abnormality or x ray abnormality which may suggest that this is a sequelae and as i said it is very difficult to differentiate whether it is because of the covid infection or it is because of something else okay i think what sir is telling to tell uh, try to tell is that uh, the x ray findings is a spectrum the majority of it is normal incidentally you may find some findings you have you should be smart enough to exclude the reasons of those findings apart from covid and it will be diagnosis of exclusion uh, and you should be lastly attributing it to covid sir sir is that message fine yeah yeah that is fine that uh, you cannot say that it is because of the covid the commonest would be you find some gggo here and there and that should not be a cause of concern unless child is very much symptomatic there may be some post covid say small airway disease in which you may find 
that there is increased perfusion but decreased aeration at some places that you say mosaic pattern but that is a very extremely rare not so common so just as a continuation of the same question for the sake of discussion is it that the recovery of the covid is itself getting prolonged beyond 12 weeks at times the healing may take little longer than expected or is it that it is a sequelae i'm just trying to get let's say it it is very difficult to say as of now but better uh, people feel that it is probably a immune phenomena how the body is reacting to the infection and uh, to clear it that is causing a long covid and more of a immunological phenomena sir uh, dr ajay is asking uh, please share your experiences on ventilation perfusion defects post covid or miss c i think he wants to know how how common uh, what are your uh, findings in that you could recollect in your uh, from your yeah, yeah. vast experience yeah yeah uh, so uh, we have published of a, a multi site uh, 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 say study on a covid acute covid infection but not on the post covid problem because it is extremely rare covid as such is very rare in pediatric patients and post covid is extremely rare so as far as uh, long term sequelae is concerned it would be extremely rare rare one in uh, uh, say 10000 or so that you can find without any comorbidity so this is anyone's guess and we are not finding significant problem of uh, vq mismatch attributed to covid infection we are finding more of a uh, 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 this thing react to airway disease and as i said in one of our neonate cohort study we documented that around 25% of the children were at, at that time it was not a covid 19 infection it was a other four uh, strains of covid which were causing infection and we could attribute it uh, we could identify during infancy they may cause this uh, reactive airway disease subsequently or asthma like etc sir there is flood uh, there is a pandemic of questions so therefore i will uh... i uh, we will expect some quick answers from you sir can yeah, 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 yeah. can missy can missy cause pulmonary artery embolism in older children uh it is very difficult to say that whether it is a misc or it is a acute uh, covid infection covid pneumonia it is well described in adults that there may be a thromboembolism but not uh, common in pediatric patients and uh, misc whether we can attribute uh, this thromboembolism dr gautam ghosh wants to know accident i mean asymptomatic covid positive children uh, is there something post covid lung disease in them when they don't yes. have active disease as of now no data that's why i am suggesting that uh, any child who has a documented covid oh. infection we should try to uh, see them and try to document that whether they are having a sequelae but as for as a general feeling is that if child is asymptomatic it is less likely to have a significant problem apart from unmasking of asthma how to differentiate uh, this particular entity from bronchial asthma very difficult it may be sequelae of covid or it may be precipitated by covid any role of pheno in post covid uh there is uh, no specific role in post covid but you can if you are having a facility you can use it as far as uh, objective monitoring for control of asthma and increasing or decreasing the doses of uh, anti inflammatory form of steroids there is a question on ics sir i am modifying the question for the sake of uh, all the pediatricians so give us the prescription of uh, ics post covid when we should start what should be the dose how long we should give how we should monitor when we should taper or when we should stop ics so, and post covid yeah it would be some similar to that of uh, any uh, asthma child that uh, dr subramanya has already uh, trained uh-huh. you so much by uh, atm uh-huh. so it would be if a patient is having more than twice a week uh, a need for a bronchodilator whether it is a covid or not covid you start with inhaled corticosteroids uh, with a uh, 100 microgram twice a day if no response increase it 
if it is a severe enough then you can start with 200 2 puff twice a day and salbutamol as and when required and if a patient is not having any risk factor for asthma you can see after 3 months if totally asymptomatic stop it follow it up but if there are risk factor or there is a significant improvement but not completely normal treat it as asthma step down the treatment follow up after 3 months and step down the treatment okay sir uh, for want of time uh, we will uh, answer the rest of the questions from the chat box yeah, but yeah, yeah. let me give last three or four lines of conclusions uh, for being the moderator uh, one thing that is important for all of us to understand is that covidology is not a simple science and it is not it is not a straight forward disease as we would all assume this has changed our perspective of medical field including our practices like telemedicine has improved video consultations have improved even the parents have learned to manage at home there is lot the parents would know than pediatricians also so this is one line like we have before christ and after christ today's date is unique 22 to 2022 you remember that's that is after christ so in future we may have pre covid era covid era and post covid era that may come and we don't know if the calendar is going to change that's the impact of covid on our practices and life now i will summarize it in four lines please ascertain that are the symptoms part of the covid or the post covid post covid means definitely 12 weeks after the covid please that's that's what dr kabra sir has nicely told the current acceptable definition second are the symptoms after 12 weeks likely to be a sequel of covid i think common sense would answer please ask the past history if somebody is a known case of asthma and after 12 weeks later he gets again asthmatic symptoms please don't attribute it to covid that's exactly therefore you should have good history and good past history third investigations will help you to exclude other diseases than proving it post covid please remember and it should be titrated based on the severity of symptoms don't go on investigating treatment please remember non pharmacological like breathing exercises yoga which have no evidence but please keep doing them till we get some evidence not to do pharmacological all that we know in respiratory is steroids and post covid means no antivirals no antibiotics nothing even during covid steroids came to our rescue even in the post covid if at all we get, we don't have robust evidence but if at all one drug that we can recommend to you for symptoms post covid could be steroids to give inhalation steroids or systemic steroids based on the skills if you have interstitial diseases or persistent parenchymal symptoms may be a short course of systemic steroids but you have airway symptoms like cabra sir said more of obstructive disease than restrictive disease then inhalation corticosteroids like we symptomatically manage most of the diseases and if st- inhalation corticosteroids in low doses gives benefit please continue otherwise do not continue in 3 to 6 weeks you will come to know the benefits of any inhalation corticosteroids that you give in practice and the duration after 12 weeks should be cautiously weighed benefits versus harm if there is no benefit please don't go on continuing for the sake of it please always let me tell you in last line the covid is basically hypoxic ischemic pulmonopathy just like your neonatal encephalopathy hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy there is hypoxia there is ischemia and there is pulmonopathy all children who do not cry will not have post perinatal asphyxia symptoms like that most of the children who have covid will not have post covid sequelae or symptoms like in adults because of the way they immunologically respond or the way they respond to inflammation and infection children are children they do tolerate better but direct damage would can cause some amount of sequelae this is all that we have got from us myself and dr kabra sir as the message i'm sorry that we cannot take most of the questions so there is hypoxic ischemic pulmonopathy 
sequelae is same as a child not crying at birth and its sequelae. Most of the children, even if they don't cry, they are fine. And some of them who do cry can also be non-fine. It all depends on the amount of ischemia and hypoxia that the cells or cell injury happens. And that will be only known post-COVID, but not during COVID. So we cannot have an anticipatory effect because some of them could have been ventilated, but extremely can be fine and come out normal. Some of them whom we think might can be accidentally found to have some symptoms. This all is the interplay of infection, immunology, and the host responses that will contribute to the chronology of symptoms and chronicity of symptoms. Treatment is essentially symptomatic. That's it from our side. Kabra sir, hope that you will, being very senior teacher, you would agree with all the comments that I have made. One last line from you and then I will hand it over to the organizers. Being okay. senior, you should have the last line, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Rukmani. I hand over to Dr. Rukmani. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Kabra sir, and thank you very much, Subramanya sir. Uh, now there is an announcement, like we are having a stage pediatric hemato-oncology conference on March 6th at Trivandrum Residency 